Hey guys, welcome back to season four of the Pulling Curls podcast. Today on episode 151, we are talking about the supplies in labor. Like what is the stuff you are going to confront when you're in labor and delivery? So let's untangle it. I'm Hillary Erickson, the curly head behind the Pulling Curls podcast, Pregnancy and Parenting Untangled. There's no right answer for every family, but on this show, we hope to give you some ideas to make life simpler at your house. Life's tangled, just like my hair. Okay, I know you were thinking about getting me a gift for the big season four, but let me just tell you the thing I want most is for you to just hop on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. It's the best gift you could give. It's free except for a few minutes. Just just pop on over. Thank you. I, I know you were getting me a gift, but don't, you know, don't go crazy. Just a review. Thanks. Today's guest, it's her second time on the podcast. She has almost 2 million followers on the Tickety Talk. She has two young boys. I think they're four and nine. Her husband works in the operating room. If you haven't met her while you've been on TikTok, you're blind. Has anyone seen her swaddling the chicken TikTok? Honestly, it made me a little anxious, but I want to introduce today's guest, Jen Hamilton. Do you feel prepared for your delivery? In just three short hours, you can be prepared for the confident, collaborative delivery you want. You'll know what to expect and how to talk with your healthcare team. And there are no boring lessons in this class. I'll use humor, stories from my 20 years in the delivery room to engage both of you. I love how Alyssa told me that she found herself laughing at things that used to sound scary. Most of all, you guys are going to be on the same page from bump to bassinet. Join the online prenatal class for couples today. You can save 15% with coupon code UNTANGLED. You can find Find the link in the show notes. Hey, Jen, welcome to the Pulling Curls podcast. Hey, Hillary. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. Okay. How long have you been a labor nurse? So I've been a nurse for 10 years and my first six years were in the ER. And so I've been on labor and delivery for four. Yeah. And they do use some of these supplies in the ER. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> but some of them they do not. <laughs> that is exactly right. <laughs> okay, so today we just want to go through some of the supplies we use in labor and delivery. I think a lot of things are really like super foreign to normal people, which if you go to med surge, there's even more foreign things, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where you're just like, what? People need that? And you're like, oh, yeah, we use it all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the first one I thought of is the IV. I think so many people get nervous about an IV. Definitely. And I think that, so I, my myself, my husband calls me a fainting goat because I hate getting stuck with needles. And if it happens, I just would rather take a nap. So my body just completely shuts down. I faint every time. What did you do in nursing school? Girl. Listen, I had to stay up late and watch YouTube videos of people getting their blood drawn so that I would not pass out. <laughs> you poked each other in nursing school, right? I didn't poke, get poked because I let them know it's, I'm going down. I'm going down. So they, uh, they let me be exempt from that, but man, it, uh, was definitely a struggle in nursing school for sure. Um, it was one of those things just like, I wanted to be a nurse so bad. And that was the one thing that was really a struggle for me. And so, um, I was like, well, what can I do? Desensitize myself. So now IVs are like my, my thing. So obviously not to get them, but, okay. uh, I, I, find myself to be fairly good at them. So yeah, I don't like them. So anytime I have a patient that is really, really nervous, I get it a hundred million percent and probably more than most people. Yeah. I will say that I forget how crappy they are until I get one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because we're just like, it's an IV. We're just going to put it in. Exactly. And if I'm like precepting or orienting somebody and I really want them to be successful with IVs, even if they're struggling, I have actually offered up my arms as sacrifice. Wow. And let them stick me. Can you believe it? So my, uh, my 18 year old self would have never thought that that was a, 
a thing that would happen. You are so grown up. I know, big girl, big girl status. I love what you told your nursing school is that it how it affected you because the worst is when patients pass out during the IV and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm thinking all these other things. I'm not thinking just the IV. Like I'm like, right. Like what happened? What else is going on? Yeah. But if they're like, I'm probably going to pass out right now. I'm just like grabbing my smelling salts and then starting the IV, yeah. right? Because I know, exactly. or I can talk her through it. Like, cause some people want to be talked through an IV and some people want yeah. absolutely no knowledge of what is going on on their arm. Mm hmm yeah. Exactly. And I'll have like a little silly saying. I say this to all my patients. I'm like, just imagine you're on a beach in Jamaica and this is just a little crab coming to give you a little pinch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it never it never works to make it feel better. But uh, yeah, that IV sucks. And whenever you first get it, your body is telling you, get it out. Like there's something there. So you have that pain. And then, you know, a little time passes and you totally, totally forget about it. Yes. And the other thing I always tell people is don't be surprised when the nurse really looks at your arms for an extended period of time, because I think, oh yeah, I think I always thought nurses just like saw it and dove in, but I'm like, I want to become one with your arm before I that invade exactly it. Exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Because as nurses, we don't enjoy like digging and prodding and poking and looking around with the needle, we'd rather find, I tell people that I'm, I'm looking at your real estate. I'm looking at all the options and I'm going to choose the best one. Location, location, location. Yes, exactly. Because you and I both know we do not like to put it in the bend of the arm yeah. um, or in the hand or anything, you know, that like really good, even spot on your forearm. It's just beautiful. Oh, it's such a good feeling when we get it in just the right spot. I wish you guys could understand. <laughs> I know. It's such a sense of satisfaction. Yeah. And then, okay. So people get confused because we're going to talk about the catheter soon, but we'll talk about the IV catheter also. So everybody needs to understand that any catheter in the hospital is just a tube. We use the catheter word catheter for lots of different things, even though to most people, it means a P catheter, I think. Yeah. Um, so that's just the tube. And all you have to know that the metal part of the needle does not stay in your arm. Yeah. I'm, I'm surprised at how many people think that we're leaving the needle in. You know, so I always make sure that I say that even if I feel like they understand that I'm like, there's no more needle in there. It's just a little flexible catheter that's left. So they are afraid to move. I think if they if they feel that there's still something metal in there. Yeah. And it's important to still move. Sometimes people keep their arm stick straight. They don't move their fingers at all. And then we'll get some swelling. So still want to move your arm like a human. Yeah. Yeah. I think movement overall, all the time, labor, life, just move it. Just move it or you lose it. Yeah. Although there are some IVs that are positional. So your nurse may yeah. be like, you got to keep, you, your nurse will tell you if there is any issue. Yeah. And we really try to make it so that it is not that way. And then we're also going to have like, there's little ports in the IV. Like all these things are just like stuff we use. So don't be surprised if it's like a really long tubing that allows you some movement. And then it's going to go through a pump, which do not mm -hmm. touch my pump. <laughs> don't even, don't even look at it too hard. <laughs> Back in the day, you used to just be able to open it and it would free flow. That's probably before uh -huh. your time. And <laughs> yeah, I was training and I was just leaving and I heard the IV alarm go off and I walked into the room and I was in the pit. He had just opened up the pit. <laughs> no. Oh no. I like stopped it and I called the nurse's station because I had like my lunchbox but it was my patient's room. So I just walked, like I was yeah. leaving, had my coat on and our charge nurse came in and yelled at that dad. <laughs> like, so he was so just an engineer who did wanted it? to see how things worked. Oh, she was like, sit him. in that chair and do not move. <laughs> yeah, don't get curious about that. And the mom, of course, was like, yeah, nope, don't touch our pumps. That's right. Okay, next thing is the Foley catheter. Uh -huh. I think people get nervous about that one too. Yeah, so I have had so many people who are super, super nervous, not even about labor, like they're prepared for all those other things, but it's the catheter that really, really freaks them out. And the catheter, it's different policy for different places, but um, where I work at least, um, the catheter comes after the epidural. There are some place, places that do like an in and out catheter where they just drain your bladder and take it back out. That's not anything that I'm familiar with as far as where I work. It's sounding like that's getting more rare. Yeah. I think they're showing it's not great. Yeah. I just feel like sticking something in there multiple times. This doesn't, it's not great. It's an out hole. 
It, it is, is not an in hole. <laughs> yes. So it is a little flexible tube that goes into your pee pee hole. And once it's in your bladder, we inflate a little balloon on the end that keeps it from coming out. And that is just because when you have that epidural, your brain cannot really communicate with your body as well. And you don't really feel that urge to pee. Um, and also having a really empty bladder is lovely for getting that baby into position um, and also keeping you from bleeding. Yeah. There are lots of reasons that we use the epidural. Now there is a chance if you were like on magnesium mm -hmm. or like serious preterm labor precautions, they might put it in when you're not getting an epidural. And obviously we do it when you have a C-section, mm -hmm. but yeah. And usually I always try and make sure my patients don't feel anything. I make sure they're nice and numb before we get in the epidural or the catheter. I will usually wait at least 30 minutes after that epidural is in just to make, and if the epidural is not, like, let's say that the epidural is one-sided or we're having trouble, some hot spots, I'll wait till those get figured out before we'll put that in. Yep. For sure. But I am a, you know, when I was pregnant, I would uh, put in Foley's in patients and be kind of jealous because I worked like <laughs> three to 11. So oh, I yeah. knew that I had a whole night of peeing ahead of me and uh -huh. I just be like, just a leg bag for tonight. Just, be fine. Yeah. Just a little, just a little Gucci purse that I just hang on the side of my, my pants there. <laughs> just the side of my bed. I just yeah. wanted it when I was asleep. It's fine. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. All right. Next, we've already talked about it, the epidural. So I think a lot of people may have seen an epidural needle or they've heard about the epidural needle and it is so much scarier than it actually is because right. thank goodness that whole thing isn't going in your arm. I would have had patients that it might've gone out the other side. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and I personally was so, so, so afraid of the epidural because of my fainting problems. I'm like, this is not going to go well for me. If you faint. <laughs> yeah, I did not faint, believe it or not, because it didn't hurt that bad. I was really into, I think the worst part is the anticipation of it. I will say with enthusiasm that a contraction, one contraction was way worse than the whole epidural process. Um, and also getting an IV, I felt like was worse than the epidural because with the epidural, we I say we, the anesthesia team numbs you um, before putting it in. So I like to say that it kind of feels like they're pushing on you with like a pencil eraser back there. Like yeah. you feel something happening, but it's not sharp. Um, and it is very common to feel like funny bone sensation kind of going down one leg or the other. And don't let that ever scare you because that's normal with trying to get it in the right place. Yeah. Good anesthesia will warn you about it. Exactly. Less good anesthesia. Just do it. <laughs> yep, exactly. And then also after, you know, we're checking blood pressures quite frequently. Um, I don't know where uh, all the different policies, but where I work, it's um, every five minutes for that first 30 minutes So that nurse is staying at the bedside, making sure that everything's okay. Because a very common side effect of an epidural is a blood pressure drop. And we always keep medicine to help that not be a thing. But if we do have, if we do need it, we do have it. And then we can fix it. Yeah. That's a good point. Everywhere I've worked, we have like a little epidural tray. We just bring into the room that has, sometimes it has the medicine that the doctors use, but also it has all the medicines we would need if something were to need to be counteracted or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You want to hear something crazy where I work? We have a Pixis in every room. Shut. I don't know. You seem like you work in a fantasy hospital, so never leave that job. Yes, it's new. So it's lovely. It's so nice. Do they stock it with lots of meds? Pretty much all the meds that you would need. I mean, the, the beauty in labor and delivery is there really are not that many meds. Right. In they're, general. they're very few, but I mean, like Pitocin, um, the erythromycin eye ointment, uh, like all the emergency meds, Methogen, Hemabay, all those things, Cytotec, they're all in there. Man. Yes, it's lovely. I can't, I can't even imagine. It's so nice. Nope. Mm -mm. My pics is like 700 miles away. I know. Yeah. So you're like <laughs> sending an someone to go get You're it. like running to the pics. Yes. You're like, I'll never make it. <laughs> or like phoning a friend. Please come bring me something, please. Yeah. Yep. And by the time they bring it to you, you already need another thing. Like, can you yep. go back? <laughs> like a pioneer crossing the plains to the Pixis. That's exactly what it's like. Oregon Trail. So with the epidural, there is a needle, but the needle does not stay in just like the IV. It's just like a flexible piece of spaghetti that's left mm -hmm. in your back. Yep. So don't be worried about that. The one thing they will mention is to not drag your bed across your back across the bed because you could dislodge the catheter, but they put on so much tape. Yep. Like so much tape. I think in four years, I've only seen that happen once. Like if you're my patient, I turn you like a rotisserie chicken after you get that epidural. Yeah. Like we are constantly moving and the amount of tape they put on there is absurd, <laughs> but it really helps to keep it in the right place. Yeah. It, and there's a free back wax at the end that we provide for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're welcome. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, and then also it has a pump, which you should not touch. Don't touch it. Yeah. That pump is a lot easier to mess up because we are to like mess with because we have to have a key like because it's pain medicine, blah, blah, yes. blah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With ours, we have a key and a code. Like you have to yeah. use the key and then you also have to have a special like unlocking code to be able to mess with it. Yeah. And then anesthesia is always like, I don't have my key. I can't remember yeah, the code. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do Actually, our anesthesia, <laughs> our anesthesia was not even provided keys. They just gave them to the nurses, which I was like, oh, how convenient. I'm so sorry. How much am I getting paid for carrying this key? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good old. Yeah. Okay. The next one, which is used universally through the nursing perfection is the chucks. Oh, we love it's them. Our best friend. But I think some people don't know. So it's kind of like if you have puppies, it's a puppy pad that just goes on the bed and they are the most useful things ever. So if there's chucks left in your drawer, take them because I always put them on the couch. If I have a kid that's like feeling pukey, I'll just like lay out some plastic just in case. And all of our chucks are like fabric. Are yours plastic and paper? I mean, I've gone through several like, do you wash them? Yeah. Fabric? Okay. I've used those before, but the ones we have right now are plasticky. Do you have like what, like, uh, ones that help you move your patient? Like you put them underneath the booty and then like slide your patient up in the bed. Um, the most recent set. Yes. Okay. But we've also had ones that just tear when you look at them. Exactly. <laughs> tear when you look at them. That's exactly what those are like. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, they just go under your bottom. If your water breaks, if you pee a little bit, if you sweat a lot, it's just an easy way for us to just like change out, get something new under your bottom without having to change all the linens because that is a huge rigmarole for nurses. Yeah. And for the patient too. I can't tell you how much I don't want to change your bed (laughs) if you throw up on it. (laughs) We will absolutely do it with, with love and enthusiasm if it happens, but if we can avoid it, we absolutely will try to do that. Yeah. Especially once you have an epidural, because then it's like the log roll and yep. it's not fun. Then we have to like pull out our nursing school education. It's too I hard. Know. <laughs> and if you're anything like if you get an epidural like mine, I knew that there were legs down there, but I just looked at him. That was it. My husband called me Lieutenant Dan because I ain't got no legs. One of them fell off the bed and I just looked at it. It was just I couldn't do anything with it. You were like, somebody's leg just fell off the bed. Yep, somebody's. <laughs> it wasn't mine, but you should probably fix that. <laughs> it's like that. Yeah. And then, you know, just all the stuff gets on there when your water breaks, when you bleed, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. We want to look at all those things, sadly, also. Yeah. So it's important for us to be able to see it, be able to change it out, all those different kinds of things. But I think people are always worried their, their water's going to break on the sheet or something like that. Like you would be at home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's just not the same. Also, our mattresses are just like industrial plastic. So everything just gets washed Mm -hmm. off. Yeah. But I think the Chucks is an underrated thing that we, I don't know that I've explained it to too many patients. I know I've had ones ask me before, but I don't walk in the room and be like, this is a Chucks. Feel free to pee on it. (laughs) Feel free to pee on it. (laughs) The tagline. I love it. Yeah. And also with the Chucks, like if I have a patient, especially who has an epidural, who's not getting and getting up and walking around my favorite pad is the towel. You just take a towel and put it right in between their biscuit. And it's so much more absorbent than like the actual pad. Oh, love it. And big, well, it's bigger. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) Because there's a lot of labor and delivery is wet. It is a very wet place to to be. So we we have a lot of absorbent things. (laughs) It is wet. Yes, it is. And there are a lot of times we pull a mop in. I've probably mopped more there than I did in my food service job. Yeah. (laughs) I I was a nurse longer. So (laughs) there's that. Okay. The last one I wanted to talk about, although I'd love to know if uh, you have any to bring up is the delivery table. So when you get close to delivery, I don't, Maybe some hospitals leave it in the room all the time. I Mm -hmm. doubt it because it's only like, quote unquote, good for a certain period of time. But we bring in this table that has the instruments that the doctor will need for most emergencies, plus just a regular vaginal delivery. Uh, It has a bucket for your placenta. It has like things to cut the cord. Yeah. Yeah. Every hospital is a little bit different. And if you look at that table, if you look at everything that's on that table, you might be terrified. You're like, oh my gosh, there's like 10 different metal things on this table. We use very few of those items. Um, those Thank are goodness. all like, yeah, very <laughs> rare time would we ever, I don't, I don't know that I've ever been in a situation where all of that was ever used. Really to have a baby, you just need some scissors to cut the cord and some hands to catch it. It's a very low tech process, but it's nice to have all of those things in case you do need them. Yeah. And that table is considered sterile. Yep. So don't 
just, just one more thing not to touch. So really yeah. it's just the IV pumps and the delivery table and then any knobs. Don't touch any knobs. Yeah. But other than that, you're welcome to peruse the room at your oh, leisure, yes. I think. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Move about the cabin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then we pull that delivery table out and magic cleans it up. So I like that part about it. Oh, yeah. It just magically goes away. Yeah. Any other supplies you think we should mention? Yeah. So I wanted to talk about like how I, as a nurse, want to make sure that my patient is like comfortable with all the supplies that they need in the beginning. So let's say I'm getting an induction. I'm meeting a patient for the very first time. Um, Before they get in there, I will get two of the big ice cup. uh, What do you call them? Ice Pitchers. Pitchers, yes. I'll get two of those, make sure they're filled to the top with mostly ice because ice will melt and water. I've got one for the for the laboring person and one for their support person. Um, I bring in the menu where they can see their options for what they can have to mainly drink if they're on clear liquids. But sometimes we'll do like a light laboring diet. And then I'll bring in warm blankets. I'll put them under the warmer to make sure that they stay warm because there's nothing worse than like being nervous and being cold at the same time. So if I can make them a little bit warmer when they get in there. Every hospital is going to have warm blankets. And if you're cold, please ask for them. Yes, exactly. That is the one good thing about the hospital. (laughs) Exactly. And then I will bring in extra linens into the room before I get in there because at some point during the day, almost guaranteed, we'll need to change something out. So I'm bringing in towels, um, baby blankets. I've already talked about the warm blankets and then also extra chucks pads. And I feel like if you can set your patient up to be so comfortable whenever you first get them in there, then it makes things a little bit easier for them. Yes. And I think that also makes them easier to ask, right? Because if you have a stack of towels in there and they want their towel changed out, they know that you're prepared for that. Yes. They, they don't feel like they're bothering you. Yeah, exactly. And on labor delivery, we are very fortunate that our nurse to patient ratios are smaller than other units. And the best case scenario is that we're one-to-one. So I always make sure that I tell my patient, like, especially if I am one-to-one, if I'm not in here, I'm literally watching what's going on with your, like, I'm, monitoring your baby 24 seven, and also just waiting for you to need me so that they don't feel like they're being a burden or a bother. Yes. Please call, just ask. And I think the other thing is like, even with the IV, sometimes people will be like this, you know, this tubing keeps catching and I have ways to solve that, but I'm not going to put it on everybody because some people might think that it's hot. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you have something that's bothering you, just tell us because there is a chance we can't fix it. Yeah. Like that's just, you know, if you're like my IV site feels a little pokey, I'm going to be like, yeah, that's such a bummer. But the other thing is I like to put like a little stocking cap on your arm and make whatever was bothering you fixed. So don't worry about, we love to MacGyver things, nurses. We do. It's, it's one of our, our skills that we have mastered for sure. Yeah. I have sewn things together for patients. Oh, Yes. Because we've, we've got some needle and thread for sure. Also, I also like to tell my patient, if you're feeling some type of way, let me know because we are your fairy drug mothers and chances are we've got something for it. So if you're feeling nauseated, we can do something with that. Like there's so many different things that we can we can do. So, but if you don't tell us, we don't know. Right. So we're here to make, we're nurses or fixers. Like we're here to make things better. Um, and if we can't fix it, we will try to make it better. Yes. I love it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, these are some of the supplies. If you guys want to check out more supplies, I go into them and I have photos in my prenatal class. So definitely join me in there because I think it just makes it feel better when you're like, oh, I've seen that before. This isn't like a torture chamber. Like mm-hmm. this is normal. Yep, exactly. Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming on, Jen. No problem. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I just think there's a lot of stuff that's only in the hospital that can be really confronting if you haven't heard about it ahead of time, like catheters. So if there's another supply that you're interested in hearing about, jump on over to Instagram, tell me what supply it is, and maybe we'll do a whole episode on fully catheters or chucks. I don't know. But head on over there and tell me. I would love to hear. Big thanks to Jen for coming on. It's so fun to chat with her. She is so real and genuine. Really enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned for next week. We are talking about spanking. Hot topic alert, guys. So don't miss that episode. And then if you're looking just for pregnancy information, although I think that spanking one is going to be good information for all of us because you're likely becoming a parent soon, right? But the next pregnancy episode, we are talking about all about birth fears. So stay tuned for that episode too. Thanks so much for joining us on today's episode. The Pulling Curls podcast grows when you share us on social media or leave a review. If you do, please tag us so that we can share and send you a virtual hug, which frankly is my favorite kind of hugging. Until next time, we hope you have a tangle-free day.